Welcome to the 23rd lecture in general topology. The topics that we will explore in this lecture include additional facts about regularity and normality, the topological properties of the real line, sorgen frey line, and Michael line, and the K-topology on the set of reals. Okay, so we will begin this lecture with some additional facts about regular and normal spaces, and we will start with a theorem. Let X be a topological space. Then the space X is regular if and only if for every point X in the space and for every open neighborhood U of the point X, there exists an open neighborhood V of the point X, such that the closure of V is contained in the set U, and the space is normal if and only if, for every closed set C, and for every open neighborhood, U of C, there exists an open neighborhood, V of C, such that the closure of V is contained in the set U. So notice that this theorem states that in a regular space, for every open neighborhood of a point, there is another open neighborhood of that point whose closure is, con is completely contained in the first open neighborhood. And in fact, this condition is equivalent to the space being regular. And in a normal space, for every open neighborhood of a closed set, there exists another open neighborhood of that closed set whose closure is completely contained in the first. And in fact, this condition is equivalent to the space being normal. So proof. First statement. Suppose that the space is regular. Let x be a point in the space and let u be an open neighborhood of the point. Then the complement of u is a closed set not containing the point X. So as the space X is regular, there exist open neighborhoods V of the point X and W of the complement of U such that the intersection of V and W is empty. Now let Y be a point in the complement of U. Then the set W is an open neighborhood of the point Y such that the intersection of V and W is empty. 
and hence the point Y is not in the closure of the set V. That is, if the point Y is in the complement of U, then Y is not in the closure of V. So by the contrapositive, if Y is a point in the closure of V, then Y is not in the complement of U. In other words, if Y is in the closure of V, then Y is in the set U. And hence the closure of V is contained in the set U. And thus the set V is an open neighborhood of the point X such that its closure is contained in the set U. So conversely, suppose that for every point x in the space x and for every open neighborhood u of the point x there exists an open neighborhood v of the point x such that the closure of v is contained in the set U. Now let X be a point in the space and let C be a closed set not containing the point X. then the complement of C is an open neighborhood of the point X. And so there exists an open neighborhood V of the point X such that the closure of V is contained in the set U, correction, in the complement of C, which is the open neighborhood of the point X. Now, as the closure of V is contained in the complement of C, we have that the set C is contained in the complement of the closure of V. And as the closure of V is a closed set, its complement is open. That is, V and the complement of the closure of V are open neighborhoods of the point X and the closed set C, respectively. Now, since a set in this case, V is always a subset of its closure. 
we have that the complement of the closure of V is contained in the complement of the set V. And so the intersection of V with the complement of the closure of V is a subset of the intersection of V with the complement of V, which is empty. And hence the intersection of V with the complement of the closure of V is empty. And thus the space X is regular. So second statement, suppose that the space X is normal Let C be a closed set. And let U be an open neighborhood. Of the closed set C. Then the complement of U is closed. Now since C is contained in its open neighborhood U, we have that the complement of U is a subset of the complement of C. And so C intersected with the complement of U is a subset of C intersected with its complement, which is empty. And hence, the closed set C and the closed set U are disjoint. So as the space X is normal, there exist open neighborhoods V of C and W of the complement of U such that the intersection of V and W is empty. Now by the same argument as in part one, or statement one, we have that the closure of V is a subset of the set U, and thus the set V is an open neighborhood. Of the closed set C, such that the closure of V is contained in the set U. So conversely, suppose that for every closed set C and for every open neighborhood, U of the closed set C, there exists an open neighborhood V of the closed set C such that the closure of V is contained in the set U. Now let E and F be disjoint closed sets now as 
the set F is closed, its complement is open, and as the sets E and F are disjoint, the set E is contained, and the complement of F That is, the complement of F is an open neighborhood of the closed set E, and so there exists an open neighborhood V of the closed set E such that the closure of V is contained in the complement of F. Now as closure of V is contained in the complement of F, we have that the set F is contained in the complement of the closure of V. And as the closure of V is closed, the complement of the closure of V is open. That is, set V and the complement of the closure of V are open neighborhoods of the closed disjoint sets E and F respectively. Now since the set V is a subset of its closure. The complement of the closure of V is a subset of the complement of the set V. And so the intersection of V with the complement of the closure of V is a subset of the intersection of V with its complement, which is empty. And hence the intersection of the open neighborhoods V and the complement of the closure of V is empty. And thus the space X is normal.